great to see you guys. What's going on? What's going on? Isn't it amazing that sin does not have to have a hold on us? Amen? Amen. We can live in the grace of God. And if you don't know the grace of God, we're going to pray that you discover it today. So would you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you for an opportunity to gather, to sing your praises, to declare your truth through song and now through your word. God, I'm so thankful that chains don't have to bind us, that the past doesn't have to define us, that shame no longer has to linger over our lives. So today, Jesus, would you come in power? Would you break chains? Would you set people free? Would you change us from the inside out? Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Do what we cannot do on our own. Help us to understand your word, to be liberated, to be filled with power so that we can live the life you've called us to live. God, we love you and we praise you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Hey, man, turn to your neighbor, give him a high five, and you can grab a seat. If I have not met you yet, my name's Paul Taylor. I'm the lead pastor here. Welcome to our third service of the day. We don't just meet here. In Mason, we meet all over the world through Rivers Crossing Online. It's been really cool to see where God has been bringing people. Today, we've had people watching from Czech Republic, India, Hawaii, Italy, among many other places. And right now, we have people watching right here in the tri-state, and you're missing out because you could just drive and be here. But we're glad you're watching. Let's welcome Rivers Crossing Online. Thank them for being with us today. If you're a guest, we're so honored that you're in the house, and uh, we're kicking off a brand new series today called FOMO. Everybody say FOMO out loud. FOMO. There you go. You guys are awake and caffeinated, and this is going to be fun. What does FOMO stand for? It's right there on the screen. Fear of missing out. Do you know that this is actually a real thing? I mean, like, it, it is in the dictionary. I want to show you the actual dictionary.com definition of FOMO. Let's say it one more time because I like it. It's fun. FOMO. FOMO. All right. FOMO, number one, a feeling of anxiety or insecurity over the possibility of missing out on something as an event or an opportunity used in a sentence. If I say no to a party invitation, I get a bad case of FOMO. Have you ever had a bad case of FOMO? All right, people have been honest in the other churches, in the other services, so. Uh, it's graduation season. Anybody got a senior graduating from either high school or college right now? That We have so many invitations. We have two juniors who are about to be seniors in high school. And yesterday, Ansley, my 17-year-old daughter, said, I have eight graduation parties to go to. I'm like, babe, you don't have to go to them all just because you were invited. Yes, I do. Why? Because I might miss out if I don't go. And I'm like, well, you have to take a gift if you go. So what's going to be missing out is my bank account. That's what's going to be missing out. And so she, she went to all eight. And, you know, and that's, that's that pressure that we feel in our culture that we're going to miss out on something, and, and that something, what is that thing for you? I don't know what that thing is for you, but I know this. It, it can be something that we see that we think we need to make us happy, and if we don't have it, then we kind of got this low rumble in our souls of, man, I really need that, and, and I, I can't define what that is for you, but I can promise you it will raise its ugly head and it will start to creep up in your soul. And you think that if you just have it, that it will make you happy. So what is that thing? That thing, number one, is a fantasy. It's a fantasy. That, that thing does not exist. FOMO, the fear of missing out. I can promise you, you can spend your entire life chasing after something, a possession, a person, that special someone, a status, an achievement, a place, a vacation, a house, a car. I don't, I don't know what it is, but th there's this lie that we believe, and I say we because I believe all human beings struggle with this. Wherever you're at on your spiritual journey, if you're a follower of Jesus in this place, you can still struggle with it. If you're not yet a follower of Christ, maybe this is what's defined your entire life. And you've been chasing after things that you think are going to make you happy, and the only thing that will really make you happy is a relationship with God. And yet so often and so frequent, we turn to other things that we think are going to make us happy, and, and we, we're driven by fear. And this creeps up a lot in the summer. In the set, awesome. I love this graphic. It's so good. And it, it just makes me think of summer. But during the summer, we see what everyone else is doing and where everyone else is going, and we, we feel like we're missing out. I, I just Googled right here in Cincinnati, just for the month of June, how many events that you can miss out on in June, in the tri-state, guess how many I found? 1,284 events just in June that I'm going to miss out on. And if I miss out on them, then... And see, we have this driving fear that, that something 
is out there that's going to make us feel better in our life and create an, a sense of purpose and meaning that only God can fill. And as long as we have FOMO, we're going to have a vacuum in our souls. And it's not just because of social media, but I think social media builds this up even more and more and more and more. So we, we see things and we have FOMO about a beach trip or we have FOMO about a beach body. So you can see somebody else and, and then what they post and think, I need to look like that and I'm missing out on life because I don't look like they look. You can have FOMO about a vacation that you can't afford or you can have FOMO about the time that you don't have to go on the vacation that you can't afford. Right? And we, and we see we have this struggle. We can, we can have FOMO, fear missing out about our kids or what our kids are doing or what our kids are not doing. And our kids aren't able to experience that. And, and I love what, what Pastor Stephen Furtick says because, see, we scroll and we go through Facebook and we go through Instagram and we compare ourselves to everyone else. And it creates in us this fear that, that we're missing out on life and it raises the ugly head of insecurity, competition. In fear, and Stephen Furtick says this, we struggle with insecurity because we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. And they go, that's going to set somebody free. You came to church just to hear that quote today. Because what we see so often, and I love these devices. This is not an anti-social media. And some of you are like, I don't have, I'm not on social media. My dad is 82 years old and is on Facebook. So I, I, if you're not on social media, that's fine, but you still live in a culture that every billboard you drive past, every radio, say, oh, I'm an AM guy, every radio commercial that you listen to is telling you that you're missing out on something. If you don't have it, then, then your life is going to suck. That's the culture that we live in. But when it comes to these devices, they're wonderful tools, but they're also terrible tools of comparison. They're terrible tools to activate pride and greed and envy in our life, and we see stories that are just that perfect moment where you're at the photo shoot with your kids. They've been ripping each other's hair out, kicking each other, screaming and crying, and for one magical second, the photographer gets them smiling, and you're like, my kids will never do that. I, I've got terrible kids. I'm sending them back, right? <laughs> Why can't my kids do that? See, see, we, we, we play this comparison game, and parents, how many parents in the room, you've got a kid who, who is somewhere between birth and 18? Let's just start there. How many of you know that they turn 20 and they're still your kid, Okay. And they're always your kid. And you want what's best for your kids, but I think so often what we get into as parents is, is we, we are afraid that they're going to miss out on something that we can't give them. I'm a child of the 80s. I've been wearing Jordans since the 80s. I'm not trying too hard when I wear my Jordans on stage. I mean, I'm just that old. And I've always loved Jordans. But in the 80s, um, we had a little bit more freedom than we do in our culture right now. Some of you guys grew up this way, and it was before there was a thing called parental supervision created, but we just kind of wandered around. We, we would get on our bikes, and we'd go around town, and we'd just disappear. Bye, Mom, and you would just ride out, and you'd be gone all day. You would find a field. You'd play baseball, and you'd throw football. You would show up at someone's house. You would go get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich so you could sustain yourself, run in the kitchen, run out, and you, it's kind of like Stranger Things. Any Stranger Things fans on here? Without the Demogorgons. I mean, you're just riding around on your bikes, and, and then you, and your, your parents just know you're going to show up at some point at night. We live in a culture now where everything is scheduled. There's 17 different sports that don't just end with the school year. You have traveling club teams as we head into summer that will take you away from your church and your family and can take you away from God if you're not careful all summer long, all because you don't want your kids to miss out and you're being driven by fear. We start earlier and earlier. I'm convinced that they're going to start curling. You know that, that, that rock on the ice? For toddlers. They're going to start curling leagues for toddlers. We have MMA leagues for toddlers. We have mixed martial arts for toddlers. We have voice lessons for three-year-olds. We have ACT prep classes for fifth graders. If your kid isn't in acting, dancing, vocal, academics, and 17 sports, then, then we're missing out. Is that, is that the tri-state or is that just me? And see, what I'm afraid of, Rivers Crossing, is that we can be so driven by FOMO that the thing that we end up missing out on is God in our own lives and in our kids' lives. And, and, and we have all of these distractions that will keep us from keeping the most important thing the main thing. And we got to deal with FOMO. And, and see, this is really my heart for this message, is this isn't condemnation. This isn't to make you feel guilty over your schedule. It's not even, and see, all those things aren't bad. I want my kids to be well-rounded. I want little renaissance, men and women in my house. But you know what? 
I can allow what I see in a feed and the emails that come in that say, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up. So just to drive me into this place where I'm being controlled by things that are never going to bring satisfaction to me, my family, or my kids. And, and usually the first thing that goes is God. It's God. When we, when we are driven by a fear of missing out, God gets de-escalated in priority in our life. And so what I want to give us a new, new name. And you can hashtag this. You can give me the credit. I made it up. But I, we got to go from FOMO to FOMOOG. The fear of missing out on God. That's what we need to fear. We need to be more concerned with us missing out on God's plan for our life, his purpose for our life, and meaning that he can only deliver than we do about what someone else is saying on Instagram. Or, okay, it's, it's 1230. I might just start preaching about what someone else says that we need to make us happy. So see, we got to start with that. The thing I want you to fear of missing out on is on God himself, FOMOOG. we got to fear that, that if we're not careful, we'll allow other things in our life to take a higher priority than God. And that's what, that's what will happen. So what I want to do today and next week is I want to kind of, today we're going to kind of give you the root cause of the fear of missing out and where that comes from. And then we're going to give some, some antidotes to it. Then we're going to talk about really what our heart is for you this summer at Rivers Crossing. But if we're going to understand the fear of missing out and FOMO and move to FOMOOG, then we got to know where, where it really comes from. And what it, the, the root cause of the fear of missing out comes from what the Bible calls coveting. That means wanting something that's not yours. So coveting is really the root cause of missing out. Anybody heard of Moses? Well, you've heard of him. You don't have to be a Christian to heard. Of, most people have heard of Moses. Let my people go. Burning bush, that whole thing. Well, then, then God, he, uh, Moses goes up on a mountain, and God gives him what will end up becoming the, the guidelines and moral tools for every culture that prospers on this planet to live by, and that's called the Ten Commandments. And the very first commandment in Exodus 20 that God gives is, you shall have no other God before me. And then he goes through a bunch of thou shall nots, honor your mother, father, don't kill, don't, don't take something that's not yours, don't lie. And then he wraps it up at the very end with what I think is not the best for last, but a reminder. First thing he says, don't put any other gods before me. And oh, by the way, it's going to be really hard because you're going to want to put other things before me because you can touch and feel possessions and things. So he, he leaves us with this coveting verse in Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. There'll be some words on the screens in blue, and if they're in blue, they're for you. So I'd love for you to read those out loud. It'll help me out today. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Pause for dramatic effect. See, it's not just stuff. It's not just the neighbor's yard that's more perfectly manicured than your yard. And if you just had their zero-turn zero mower and, a, and a, a gas blower and a gas weed eater, your yard, could, no, no, no. It could be the spouse of the person next to you. See, see, see what God goes after is, is we can fear that we're missing out, not just from things, but from relationships. So he says you should not cover your neighbor's wife. Or his pool boy or pool girl, man, manservant, manservant, his ox or donkey or what? Anything, anything that belongs to your neighbor. There, there's this fear that they have something that I don't have, and if I could just get it, then my life would finally be full of meaning and purpose and joy and the, the promise of this great country, happiness. And see, what, what our culture, and this is, again, we live in a culture that, that through capitalism and marketing is constantly putting messages into our minds and into our hearts every single day that tells us that, that, oh, the issue in your life, the reason you're not happy is because you don't have this. Facebook feeds even do this relationally. You know someone, and you've seen this. I've seen it crop up many times. You know someone personally who's struggling in their relationship. They go through a divorce, and the next post on their Facebook is a new person who is nice, and they're all smiling, and it's all perfect, and you think to yourself, well, my relationship sucks, so you, you start fearing missing out that maybe I'm not with the right someone, and I'm going to spend the less, rest of my life miserable, and I should just get rid of this one and get a new one, and then I'll be happy. That's one picture, one post. that shows you none of the pain that got them there. See, this happens in so many different ways, and Jesus goes to the core of it in Luke 
chapter 12, verse 15. He says, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. All kinds of greed. It's not just over stuff. There's all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his what? Possessions. No possession. See, see the problem with coveting is it's both faithless and idolatrous. It's faithless because if you're a follower of Jesus in this room, and that means that you've been transformed by the love and the grace of Jesus Christ, you've been born again from the inside out, you know him personally, then there's an abundance of promises. Jesus said he came that he might give us life, what? To the full or abundant. Around here we say extraordinary life. We're ordinary people, but we're, extre- we're seeking extraordinary lives, not extraordinary stuff. Because stuff, will, possessions will always let you down. FOMO, it, it changes by the, it's, it's with the wind. One day you're looking at a feed and, and you want to be as good of a chef as your neighbor who makes these beautiful, what they're doing is they're, they're, they're creeping on someone else's Instagram, a chef's, and taking pictures and acting like they cooked it. But, but you want to be a chef and I got to cook like them or you want the car that the neighbor just got or you want to go on that vacation. See, it's, it's the, the wind blows. It just blows. And, and every day if your heart is consumed with possessions, there will always be something else to possess. Fear of missing out. It it can control us and it can ruin our lives if we're not very careful. I was thinking about this um, because when when we scroll on these, what, what I was realizing is that whether you're scrolling or swiping, it often, wonderful tool. Again, we use every tool that we can to reach people for Jesus. There's not a week that goes by that we don't get a direct message or a post or a comment of how Jesus is working through our online community, through Twitter, through Facebook, through Instagram, and we'll continue to do that. Yet, in our personal lives, as we scroll through, it's the scroll of missing out. It's the swipe of, oh, look at that. Oh, look where they were. Oh, how did they afford that? Oh, I'll never be able to afford it. And and it can easily turn into this, this distraction that keeps us from rejoicing. See, this is where the faithlessness comes in. If you know Jesus Christ, Jesus wants you to put trust and faith in him that if you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, that everything else you need will be added to you. So so when we start thinking that things aren't being added to us, that means that we're not being faithful to God's promises. He said, said, don't the the sparrows over there, aren't they they more beautiful and provided for than, than you can possibly imagine? How much more does God care about you? He will take care of every need that you had, not every want that you have. It's a big, big difference. And so what we have to understand is that that fear can drive us away from the heart of God. It's idolatrous because we're putting our hope in something else to give us joy and meaning and fulfillment other than God himself. And see, Martin Luther said that the, the human heart is an idol factory. It just keeps making new ones. You get over one and something else pops out. There's always the fear of missing out until you understand that the only thing that you cannot miss out on is God himself. And once he becomes your sole satisfaction, it will change the game for you. Um, I, I just, can I confess something to you? All right, I've been a Mac user since uh, 1998. Uh, this is not a war. Apple's just better. It's just it's that simple. And, uh, but the one thing I've always hated about my Apple laptops are the cords, right? You got this power brick, you got one cord that plugs in, you got this other cord that they change every couple years that one year it's a magnet and it plugs in, now it's not a magnet so you can knock your computer off. And I just get frustrated because I like things nice and I like it to fit in my backpack. And so I put it in there all nice and, and neat and then I pull it out and it's all wound up. It pulls out pens and books and papers. It's just, a, it's just a mess. And then one day Jeff Hale, our campus pastor for Deer Park that'll be launching later this year, he comes in with this thing called a side Sidewinder. And, and I saw it. And I had the fear of missing out. Why? Because this thing is amazing. Check this out. It takes your cords that are a, a mess, and then you just pull it out. And I can just pull it all the way out. And then when I'm done, <laughs> and then it slides neatly right into its pocket in my backpack, only to be unwound when it's needed. It's, it's awesome. It's wonderful. And I said, I got to have it. See, see, I am susceptible to the fear of missing out. And it was, it was amazing because before I could even go find it, guess what happened? 
my Instagram feed popped up an advertisement for the Sidewinder. And because of my fear of missing out, I clicked the link and I bought it. And guess what's popping up now? The new edition in black that I think I need. I need two of these. I got to have one in black and I, see, see what it is. And if you want one, uh, if you use my, my username, PaulRC3, you'll get a 5% discount and I'll get a 10 <laughs> No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But isn't that how things work? Someone's always got a side hustle. Someone's always telling you you can get more. And, if, and, and, and see, if we're driven by that, we'll be consumed and we'll fall prey to this over and over and over and over again. It's not social media or marketing. That's not the problem. This has existed for thousands. It's, it's existed since the garden when we rebelled against God and believed that we could be like him. And that we could control our own destiny. And that if we just got more stuff or more people or more relationships or more power, that we'd be satisfied. So this has been going on for thousands of years. James, he's Jesus' brother, which to me gives Jesus a lot of credibility. How many of you would think, anybody, I grew up the baby out of four boys. And I can promise you, none of my brothers are the Messiah. None of them. <laughs> they're good. They're, they're amazing men. But, but there's, I'm never going to confuse them with the Savior of the universe. But guess what? James believed that his brother was the son of God and later wrote about him and became an author in the New Testament of one of the epistles. That gives me, that gives so much credibility to Jesus because if someone that close to you thinks you're the son of God, that's powerful. And, and yet James writes about this issue of the fear of missing out and he talks about where it really comes from. It's not from marketing. It's not from capitalists. It's not from your Facebook or Instagram. It's from inside of your very heart. James 4, chapter, chapter 4, verse 1. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. See, we have to learn to be content. We have to learn that, that God has us right where we're at if we're followers of Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with ambition. There's nothing wrong with pursuing dominion, which was one of the assignments for humanity. There's nothing wrong with this. I don't want you to hear this message the wrong way. What I'm worried about is that you care more about what you're missing out on than missing out on God himself. we got to move from FOMO to FOMOOG. Amen? And at Rivers Crossing, we want to give you two ways to do that this summer. We do not want you to miss out on what God is doing at Rivers Crossing this summer. And so often in, in the culture of the church, we check out in the summer. It's kind of like, hey, guys, have a great summer. I'll see you in the fall. And you're, you're not going anywhere. You just get, we just get lazy. We, we, Hebrew, in Hebrews chapter 10, Peter said this in his prayer earlier. It says, do not forsake the gathering together of believers. And we just kind of slack off in the summer and we chill and we go on hiatus, and I don't want you to do that. God moves here. We have been able to see over the last 12 years God do incredible things in the summer. One of the ways he does that is through other speakers who are going to come starting on Father's Day. When I am on my study break, I take time off every summer to, to work on the church and not in it, to let God speak to me about our direction and hear where we're going to be going for the next year on our preaching calendar. And, and then we bring in amazing community. I'm talking world-class communicators on Father's Day, we're going to have John Morgan. He's got giant biceps. He will, I promise you, 56 years old, and his biceps, he could put your head right here and squeeze it, and your eyes would pop out. He's a really strong guy. I've worked out with him many times. But he also has a, a voice from New Zealand. It's, it's like that must be what God sounds like. And, and he's a dynamic preacher. He preached last fall. He literally travels and speaks to churches of thousands and thousands and thousands all over the world. You don't want to miss it. Second week of Preach It, David Hughes from Church by the Glade spoke at our 10-year anniversary amazing church, over 10,000 people that God has drawn to his church, incredible communicator, will be preaching. And then two of our very own church planters, uh, Pastor Stevie from 901 Church in Memphis, Stevie Flockhart, will be preaching week three of Preach It, and then the last week, we're going to have the honor of having Pastor Joey Ferjanic in the house from the Block Church in Philadelphia, where because of your generosity and our investment in the Block, I preached there last week. They had over 1,000 people four and a half years in, in Philly, in three locations, in seven services. I was really tired. It was bapti Baptism Sunday, and they broke the record. 46 people got baptized, and 16 people came to Christ because of what you're doing and pouring into through your generosity. So... 
so we want you to stay connected. And so often we check out. Don't check out and then come back in the fall. Stay connected this summer. It will help you battle against FOMO in your life. The other way is we check out of our giving and our generosity. Well, some of you have never checked in, but that's another sermon. But, but we, what we think is like, oh, the church will keep going. And what we end up doing sometimes, not everyone, is because of the fear of missing out, we got to take our kids on a vacation that we can't afford and what we'll do to do the vacation that we can't afford because I want my Instagram to look like hers or his is we rob God and spend the money on ourselves and then wonder why our life isn't full of meaning and purpose. And if you've never heard what God's word says about generosity, it's not a giving sermon, but we did a, a, a series earlier this year that really has changed the trajectory of our church. So many of you have stepped into generosity. We did a series called From Stress to Bless. How many of you know that our fear of missing out makes us buy things that we don't need because we think it's going to make us happy? Can we all agree on that? So we did a series called From Stress to Bless where we talked about God's first and best when we give God our first 10% that he will let us live off of the 90% and we'll be more blessed off the 90 than we are off of keeping the 100. And that four-week series is transformational. You can download it through our app and go back and watch it. I encourage you to do that. But during that series, we got so many powerful testimonies of people who had lived their entire life with what I call a scarcity mindset. It's, oh my gosh, if, if I trust God with my resources, then I'm going to miss out on something. I'm not going to be able to give my kids what I want to give them. I'm not going to be able to, to, to go where I want to go, buy what I want to buy. And, and I got an email from someone who had struggled with that fear for his entire life. And, and yet his wife wanted to give. And every month at the end of the month, she wanted to give to the church. And he wanted to keep it because he wanted to make sure they had enough. And God broke through his life, broke into his life, and he had a breakthrough. And, and he sent it to me. And I said, man, people need to hear this story. Because so many people are living in fear instead of faith. So many people are allowing a scarcity mindset and FOMO to control them that they never stepped into generosity. And he allowed me to share it via video. So I want you to watch Peter Barton's testimony. Check this out. So I grew up in Ireland. And I never really had an example of tithing. I never saw that in my parents. Um, it might have been something they did, but I'd never learned that. You know, my wife, she would start sponsoring a kid and giving money to church and other charities. And, and I'd question that because I didn't understand it. I kind of grew up in a, in a family where, you know, money was paramount and you had to hold on to it as long as you could and make as much as you could. And I never really understood the, the, the reverse side of that, you know, about, um, about tithing because of that you know I was just kind of afraid of like what I was going to be missing out on and that I wouldn't be I wouldn't have the life that I had you know become accustomed to growing up um, a, a lot of it came down it was really just selfish it was greed um, for me I wanted to hold on to it for myself I, I think it really struck me um, not too long ago and it was actually a, a it was because of because of Rivers Crossing, uh, you know, you sit in one of those services where you feel like Paul's talking directly to you. And that, I mean, that's, that's God. And, you know, I think the explanation that really hit home for me, it, it's not about the money. It's not about the tithing. It's about the trust. It's about getting your heart in the right place. And so I think as a result of giving and being more, more generous, I mean, I've cried looking at our checkbook, um, <laughs> and it's truly amazing. I don't understand how, <laughs> no, I understand it's God. <laughs> I, you know, giving, giving seems to, to get more, and it's just more of an enriched life. It's not about getting more money or expecting more money in return. Isn't that great? I, I call that... Stepping into the extraordinary, not letting the fear of missing out control us, but learning to trust in God with our stuff. One of the hardest things that we can do is see, like Jesus said, that our possessions can either possess us or we can use what God gives us to be a blessing to others. Now, James keeps going. Jesus' brother, we read the first two verses from chapter 4 and verse 3. He says this, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with what? Wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own 
pleasures. That, that, that's straight FOMO. Fear of missing out. God, why can't I have this? God, will you give me this? Because I saw it on my, my feed, and they have it, and therefore I want it. And we ask him with the wrong motives because we want to keep it for ourselves. And he says, if you'll learn just to release and trust me, sow into my kingdom, then I'm going to give you a harvest that's, that's unbelievable in your life. So we want you this summer, because we don't want you to miss out on what God is doing at Rivers Crossing, to automate the important things in your life. What my wife and I have learned to do over many, many years is the very first thing that, that goes out of our account every single month goes straight to God. And, and you know what? It goes straight into, sows into his kingdom. So some of you this summer, you need to set up automated giving. And just go to our website, go to the giving tab, and, and make it a regular, habitual part of your life. And then you, you won't have that fear controlling you. Finally, second thing. So we don't want you to miss out on what God is doing at Rivers Crossing. And another thing that's coming right after Preach It, just by the way, is At the Movies. What up? At the Movies is going to be so good this year. You're not going to want to miss a week of At the Movies. But it's not just about what God is doing in the church. We do not want you to miss out on what God wants to do in you personally and individually this summer. And see, what so often happens is we don't just check out of church attendance. We check out of our faith. We check out of our quiet times. We check out of our personal growth. We check out of our personal worship. We check out and we're like, I'll get back to you, God. I'll see you in the fall, God. We'll, we'll get back together this fall. And we don't want that to happen. Do you know God is moving? I said this a few weeks ago that we are in the middle of a revival. Don't ever miss that. Over 600 people pushing into the mid-600s have already said yes to Jesus in 2019 at Rivers Crossing. It's incredible. It's incredible. We celebrate that. We love new life in Christ. But do you know what else we love? Our mission, we want to give people an opportunity to become fully engaged followers of Christ. It's not about a prayer. That's important. It's not just about being born again, but what are you being born again into? You're being born into a brand new life of following Jesus. So we are so concerned about your personal growth and your spiritual growth. If you're a new believer, if you've been a follower of Jesus for 20, 30, 40 years, that we want that to become an habitual part of your life. So we are creating, it starts today, it's happening right now. So that means if you want to start participating in your personal growth through the growth track, which is our brand new way for four weeks, the first four Sundays of every month until Jesus returns, we're going to do the growth track. Why? Because we've done church membership. Some of you have been around long enough to remember when we had eight classes, two-hour theology lectures, and you couldn't miss one to become a member of this church. It was way, way long time ago. That's why we had 73 members and 2,000 people. And, uh, and we're like, that's not working. So we created Extraordinary Life Experience, which was awesome, but we just couldn't do it frequently enough, and it was an off hour. It was during the night. And so we have blown up ELE, and we've created the growth track because we really believe that it can help you grow in your spiritual journey. So week one, which is the first Sunday of every month, will be about my story and what God has done in my life and why ordinary people seeking extraordinary lives is our vision statement because I was jacked up far away from God and didn't want anything to do with him until I was 21 years old. Out of that transformation in my life, the vision for Rivers Crossing was born and why we do church the way we do it, we'll talk about that first week. So it's all about our church. The second week is all about how you can step out of the ordinary and into the extraordinary. You know, you know the real way to overcome the fear of missing out is to be filled with the Holy Spirit and understand that he has a role in your life. So we talk about how do you actually follow Jesus day by day and develop that personal relationship. Then week three, we talk about it's so important. I say this often. you got to get out of rows and into circles. You can't do the one anothering of Scripture by just staring at a screen or staring at me every Sunday. And we're all about worship. You can lift your hands and worship to God, but until you get life on life, with someone out of a row and into a circle and connected in community. So we talk about week three, why community is so important and how you can get involved with it through men's groups, women's groups, community groups, serving groups. And then week four, we talk about how you can start serving. And if you miss a week, you just catch it again the next month. We take off the fifth Sunday. So the first four Sundays of every month, growth track will be happening. Please, 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 if you've been through, if you've been through membership, if you've been around that long, if you've been through ELE, we want everybody to go through the growth track. Why? Because we want you to become a fully engaged follower of Jesus Christ. It's so, so important. Last thought. This summer, we want you to stay engaged with the church. We want you to stay engaged with your personal growth. We don't want you to feel guilty for the struggle 
that we sometimes all have, but you serve a God who will help you overcome and no longer be controlled by your fear of missing out. We should fear of missing out on God. And see, Proverbs 9.10 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. See, I'm not talking about being terrified of God. I'm talking about having a holy reverence for God that places him first in your life and everything else comes underneath God in your life. And what the fear of missing out will do is it will make you spend all of your energy, your effort, your resources on getting something that will never, ever fulfill you. Never. So start with the fear of the Lord and then know this. Jesus said this in Matthew 5, chapter 6, that if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, what will happen? You will be filled You'll be filled. That's a promise. So this summer, do not take a vacation from God. Don't don't check out. Don't don't allow this this driving force in your life that I'm going to miss out on something cause you to miss out on God. We want you to experience everything that God has for you this summer. It's going to be an amazing summer at Rivers Crossing. I would love to pray for us and, uh, and just pray a blessing over all of us today to help us as we struggle with this battle for FOMO. And let's move from FOMO to what? FOMOOG. Good, good job. Hashtag FOMOOG. God, we love you. We praise you. We honor you. We come into just a time just to, to do a couple of things. First of all, if we're followers of Jesus in this room, just to repent. It can be everything from a sidewinder for some stupid chords, to a relationship, to an obsession, to look different, be different, feel different. We can fear we're missing out for our kids. We can fear we're missing out on a vacation or a house. But God, you are the only one that can sustain. You're the only one that can fill us. You're, Holy Spirit, we need you so much in this room. So if you're a follower of Jesus and, and fear has been driving your life, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. So, Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you would release your Holy Spirit all over this room to help us wage war against that insatiable desire to get more, to do more. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, maybe you walked in here because you saw a billboard or you saw someone else's feed or through an invitation, we say that the most abundant life that you can experience, the most extraordinary life that you will ever taste and see is a relationship with Jesus. So don't leave here without knowing him. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But you have to make a choice to follow him. We'd love to talk with you after the service. We have prayer warriors who will be in the prayer room. Talk to any of our staff if you want to start your journey with Jesus Christ today. God, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for your word. We find freedom and truth in it. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. Next week, we are going to conclude this two-week series on FOMO. And we are going to talk about one of the most effective and important tools that God gives us to battle the fear of missing out. Don't miss it. You're dismissed. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.